Maven witnessed Uber Cortex. That's pretty all right. This will be interesting. Wave 30, Deathless. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is my Vol Ice Shot deck stacking Deadeye that I've been working on for about the past month. This is the absolute opposite of a budget build guide or anything like that. This is just a build showcase. If you're interested in what this looks like at a lower investment, I did make a 10 Divine recommendation video a few weeks ago. You do need to be a little bit creative putting it together at 10 Divines, but it can run T16 Deli Mirrors very cleanly and very quickly at a lower investment. What this represents is me really spending the past few weeks pouring everything that I could into it. In terms of budget, the budget is just, yes, if you can spend the money, do it. This is a stacking build. Stacking builds just necessarily, they have a very, very high ceiling, like basically the sky's the limit. You can throw everything that you want at a build like this, and it just feels awesome. I think stacking builds are really interesting and kind of nuanced in terms of trying to min-max it. There's always something that you can work on. There's always, you know, one jewel that you can squeeze two more dexterity out, hit that next break point. If you want to just do a crystallized omniscience, lightning arrow, whatever, those builds are out there. If you want to be boring and play tornado shot, that's out there. <laughs> this is a bow build with a soul. There's a lot more character and variability in how you can build this. And particularly this league with the Crucible Trees, with Mana Forged Arrows, with Vengeance Cascade, with all of the new plus proj and everything that we have on the tree right now. I really think this is probably the best time in the history of Path of Exile to play a bow build. There is a very high chance that GGG will probably be looking at it for nerfs in the near future. So if you want to play a bow build, this is the time. I have done Wave 3 Simulacrum, all 30 waves without dying. I have done Ubers without dying. I'm actually currently working on seeing how deep into the mines I can go with this build. In its full damage configuration, it's over 120 million DPS. Counting, shooting, and returned arrows, it's over 400 a second. I have over 5k life, effectively max spell suppression, good less damage taken, etc., etc. It just feels really good and honestly just very well-rounded. However... It's not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap at all. Uh, you know, full caveat right there. So I'm just going to go over everything that went into this build, my thought process, how I crafted certain items. As I said, this is just a showcase of what I've done. Maybe it'll inspire you. Maybe you'll want to go this direction or you'll learn something from it. But yeah, let's get started. All right. So getting started, what the heck is deck stacking whatever, right? Why, why do we do that? How does it actually work? A little bit more complicated this league now because we have the Crucible Trees. The most traditional baseline deck stacking comes from this mod right here. Adds cold damage to attacks to this weapon for only attacks with this weapon per 10 dexterity. This modifier exists both on Hunter and Shaper bases. Been around for a really long time. Deck stacking, I shot. It's just, it's a traditional style build, but it's kind of fallen to the wayside. It's been very non-meta for a while. But what we have this league particularly is the new two to four cold damage to attacks exact same mod on the crucible tree. So now we get twice as much effectiveness per 10 dexterity here, as well as being able to use the poise prism right here, which was actually just introduced two leagues ago. This has cold fire and lightning damage per attributes. We currently see attribute stacking, try attribute stacking inquisitors. And kind of the cool thing here is this also encourages us to stack all of our attributes a little bit more, even going beyond going pure dexterity. On top of that, we're using fractal thoughts right here, which gives us crit multi if dex is higher than int. 
dexterity if strength is higher than int percent 15 percent as well as elemental damage per 10 dexterity and plus two max life per 10 intelligence so fractal thoughts plus poise prism really encourages us to kind of like passively stack all of our attributes as we you know want to keep pushing the build further and this is kind of what takes deck stacking as a dead eye a little bit in a different direction than it used to be in the past. Old versions of this, we'd see like 120 strength and 119 intelligence just to hit the fractal thoughts breakpoint. But you're not really going all out in all your attributes. But we get that this league, which is really cool. So I'm like kind of try attribute stacking here a little bit, but dexterity is obviously the main thing that we're going for. So the combination of the crucible tree, the prefix modifier on my bow, and the poise prism all combined gives me five to nine flat cold damage per 10 dexterity. So with 2,331 dexterity, that's 233 stacks of 10 dex times five to nine. Let's just average that to seven. That gives me a base cold damage of 1,631 from just my dexterity. And then because Ice Shot has higher effectiveness of added damage, that all gets multiplied times 1.76 for a lot of flat added cold damage to my attacks. And the bow obviously is kind of the critical part of what enables this build. So we craft the bow with deafening essences of hatred. You basically just want to spam it until you get both your prefixes. It is a pain in the butt. It can take a lot of essences. If you do ever hit an open prefix with the cold damage to attacks, you can just try to YOLO Exalted Slam. It's, it's definitely worth it to try to hit that socket skills 20% more attack damage. Now, if you want to go for the cheaper version, you can do Prefixes Can't Be Changed, Ashling, or honestly just use a Veiled Chaos Orb and try to unveil 15% elemental damage penetration on the prefix. It's not quite as good, but it's not bad. However, in that case, you will have a little bit more of a struggle crafting your suffixes because you won't be able to get a chosen mod on the suffix there. The way that this bow suffixes were finished were prefixes can't be changed, veiled chaos orb, unveil the attack speed, craft crit chance, and then YOLO slam T1 crit multi. <laughs> so yes, a very lucky suffix craft right there, but it's not super hard. It can get a little expensive doing prefix can't be changed, reforged or whatever, but it's not like a hard to hit thing. So yeah, that is how the bow was crafted. In terms of the tree, I have the two to four right here. This only comes from combining crucible trees on bows. So you have to go to the geodes down here. These guys contains a forge that can combine trees. It's a mutated modifier, just like Rampage. Just throw bows in there until you get it or buy it yourself. Last time I saw the price of this was about 20 divines to get it on a bow by itself. And then obviously when you're crafting this, you want to start with the tree first because you're going to be imprint smush things together, try to get a good tree. So the rest of my modifiers are increased attack speed, 50% less global damage, 30% local attack speed on the bow is very valuable. It still translates to about 8% more damage on the build. And then just, you know, more attack speed just feels better regardless. This leech node is absolutely incredible. You get attack damage, leech's life, like any attack damage, it's not elemental or physical based. And you get 60% increased total recovery per second from life leech. What this means is you're usually capped to 20% of your max life per second from Life Leech, this goes up 60% on top of that. This gives you 60% increased, so if you're still at 20%, this brings you up to 32% life per second on your Life Leech, which is absolutely incredible. This node right here is incredible. It entirely solves all of my intelligence issues, and because we get life per 10 intelligence on our Fractal Thoughts, we actually get a lot of life from this as well. And then Barrage and Frenzy have crit chance per endurance charge. I have no endurance charges on this build. This node does nothing. Obviously, even better would be getting 10% uh, dexterity and strength nodes. Unfortunately, this tree doesn't have any, and I have no desire to try to reroll anything on a tree here. Anyway, that's my Crucible passive tree. That's my bow. And then critical strike chance on the enchant from Harvest. This is really what enables the build with a Fractal Thoughts with a poise prism as well. And then in terms of like the clear and with the with the projectiles, I have plus one pierce crafted on my gloves, one chain on my poise prism, and then two chains up here in the uh, the ricochet. So the clear is absolutely cracked. You know, every time that I shoot, there are so many arrows on the screen. So that's really the baseline for what puts the build together. Besides that, the rest of the build is basically min maxing as much dex and quality life as you can get. And I find that a very interesting challenge. It's fun having a near infinite ceiling on your build. The rest of the core of the build is really identical actually to the 10 divine vault I shot video. So watch that for a deeper dive, I guess, into 
all of the other pieces, but I'll go over them very quickly. For our auras, we're running Grace, Herald of Ice, Hatred, and Anomalous Precision right here. I have an absolutely cracked Watcher's Eye. We were not able to find another Watcher's Eye like this, actually, both in Standard, Offline, and in League, but obviously there's probably some that are rotting in a Stash Tab in Standard, but I was able to pick this up for 15 Divines, which is obviously a ridiculous price. Critical strike chance affected by hatred. Movement speed affected by grace. I very much value movement speed. This is a mapping build. The point of this build is to map quickly as possible. And so I value that a lot as well as flash charge when you deal critical strike while affected by precision. This does have an internal cooldown of like 150 seconds. It's only one flash charge. It's not incredible, but I do notice that my flash sustain is a lot more consistent while I'm mapping. And you can sustain your flask a little bit better when you're bossing as well, which is pretty nice. So yeah, that Watcher's Eye with these auras is a is an absolutely cracked combination. Our primary links in our bow are Vol Ice Shot. Vol Ice Shot is very important. Uh, it is one of the coolest new skills in the game. Awakened Cold Pen, Increased Critical Damage Support, Awakened Wed, and Anomalous Inspiration Support. That is one of the kind of complicated balance points in this build. And then I am using Anomalous Mirage Archer support here for plus two projectiles. You can use Hypothermia. Mirage Archer just feels really good, I think. This is kind of like the go-to for mapping. And then we use Barrage support here for single target. Makes our arrow fire in a laser. So that's kind of the, the single target jump swap there. Only need to do that for like big bosses. We have so much damage just regularly. It doesn't really matter. And then we have two Mana Forged arrow setups. As you can see, I am shooting a lot of arrows. The first one here for pure utility is we're using Anomalous Caustic Arrow with the enemies withered by you have negative six to all res. So Anomalous Caustic Arrow has a 20% chance to inflict wither. And then just the minus six res right there is really nice. Anomalous Frenzy just has additional projectile. The reason why we do this is it just gives us frenzy chargers. So, you know, this is just free frenzy chargers on every single bow build. And then Divergent Culling Strike Support gives us culling strike as well as recover 2% of life when we get a, an enemy cull. Just kind of nice quality life right there. Other Mana Forged Arrow Support setup is Divergent Inspiration with Power Charge on crit. So we get Power Charge generation very consistently here. And then we're using Ice Shot, Lightning Arrow, and Anomalous Burning Arrow. Burning Arrow is absolutely incredible. You'll see that it has a very, very high effectiveness of added damage, which since we get so much flat damage from our deck stacking, it hits really, really hard. We can see that Burning Arrow by itself is doing 3.3 million DPS in this build. This is only on a three link being triggered twice a second and it's doing 3.3 million DPS. You'll see that Burning Arrow actually has a higher mana cost than any other bow skill, at least that, that I tested. And because of that, it makes it very challenging to balance the mana cost for triggering Mana Forged. And we'll go over that in a second. And then I just have Steel Skin on left click, keeping it simple, Anomalous Flame Dash, so it goes very, very far. Very big fan of Anomalous Flame Dash. Like, it goes two-thirds of a screen. It's pretty nice. And then Divergent Mark on hit, and I am using Anomalous Assassin's Mark right here. Check out this video right here, Finding the Best Curse for Vengeance Cascade, if you're interested in why I'm currently using Assassin's Mark. I explain that in a lot more detail. And then, yeah, right here, the budget deck stacking ice shot. Check that out if you want, like, a deeper dive in all the mechanics in the build. I'm going to go over all of them in this video anyway, because I can't help myself. But, but if you want a different wording of it from a couple weeks ago, you can watch that video. <laughs> But yeah, that's our full gem setup. And then in terms of the rest of the gear, we have two rings here that have dexterity on the implicit. I bought both of these bases for about six divines. I know the price is much higher. As always with an expensive build like this, my recommendation is, you know, if it's too expensive for you, this league, you know, set up some trade snipes, get ready for it and prepare to play it in a future league. I know it sucks if things get nerfed, but that's really, you know, if you want to always play something a little bit cheaper, with the rotating meta. This is just general Path of Exile recommendation. The price of everything varies so greatly. Like I can make a video and then within a day, the price of everything that I said in that video can vary dramatically. The thing to me and what's important about this content that I put out is I, I want you to memorize this stuff, like remember it and it'll jog your memory in one, two or three leagues in the future you'll remember, hey, I wanted to play that build or that seemed like a good farming strategy and no one's talking about it right now. Let me just double check things and all the prices might be way lower. The economy in this game is just so fluid and dynamic. Yeah, as soon as a video is posted, things go out of date, but it's about the knowledge and what you gain by learning about that stuff that you can apply in the future. That That's what matters. I've easily spent probably about 300 divines on this build. And if you try to put it together today, it might cost you four or 500. But if you remember this in the future, you know, hopefully you can put it together a little bit cheaper. So just quickly go over the jewelry here. Vengeance Cascade, like I said, is the, the go-to. 
It makes our arrows return. It's like kind of the main reason why bow skills are so strong right now. In terms of crafting this, you want to use an Awakener's Orb, combine the increased dexterity with the increased attributes. Suffixes can't be changed. You want to use a Wild Bristle Matron to save some currency. And then you want to do Reforge Influence, which will cost you about 1.5 Divines every single time you do it. It's going to cost you 5,000 Blue Juice as well as one Sacred Crystallized Life Force. This will cost you in the range of 1 to 1.5 Divines plus the 1.5 divines for the wild bristle matron so it costs about three divines every time you go for the damage per dexterity and it is a one out of 36. you know just so you know that's uh this is an expensive hard craft and then we yolo slammed the uh the elemental pen so that was a very lucky hit right there of course but that is what it is and then both of the rings and the belt were crafted with essences of sorrow Right here, <laughs> this essence may cause you a lot of sorrow in your life if you try to put together a deck stacking build. Looks like you can get about 65 per divine right now. The general idea is you want to go for as much res as possible because we're stacking attributes that's taking up one of our regular suffix modifiers. And we have some mandatory uniques in this build that aren't giving us any res. That is a big pain point in putting this build together. So essences of sorrow until you hit enough res. I actually want T1 strength right here. It's absolutely critical to have more strength than intelligence. You can see that mine are actually really close. That's because we want that 15% increased dex if strength is higher than int. Essences of sorrow until you hit good things, ideally double T1 res. Suffixes can't be changed, reforged life, whatever. Whatever it takes to craft all these. Veiled Chaos Orb here just to guarantee life. T1 life would be better here, but it is what I got. This one's got T1 elemental damage with attack, so I kept that. Kind of like whatever. I could go for a little bit more life here if I wanted to. And then we use Intrinsic Catalyst on all of these to make sure we have the plus 20 on the attribute modifiers. This is an increased dexterity synthesized belt. This base cost me 1.5 divines. The regular ones will cost you one divine. These ones are not particularly expensive. However, give you a little tip here. We want to do uh, implicit dex right here, percent dexterity. We want to set minimum to 13 right here. Belt, increased dexterity. We want to say synth is yes. Corrupted is no. And here's the most important thing. Set your max quality to zero. The thing is, the trade site doesn't do a very good job. Also, because we want T1 res, we do want item level of 84 plus. You'll see that there's a couple here at one dexterity. The problem is, unfortunately, the trade site doesn't properly account for not having max quality. So if I don't have that turned on, you can see ones that will say, look at this. So here's, here's what can happen, right? These are basically scams where someone took a T2 dexterity roll they put on the intrinsic catalyst and then they listed it. If you mouse over this, you'll see it's actually only 10 to 12 and it's not 13 to 15. So don't get scammed there. Make sure you set that quality to zero. These two are scams. Now, luckily it looks like no one has fallen for the scam in five days, but this one's listed even lower, AFK. In fact, I'm just gonna ignore these two people because they're, they're scammers. All right, anyway, back to the task at hand. Gloves, nothing crazy. I bought Fractured T1 Dexterity for like five chaos. Also, we basically want all evasion rating bases. We don't care about armor or energy shield whatsoever. So all pure evasion bases. Bought Fractured Dex for I think like five to 10 chaos. Hit it with a couple of essences for chaos res and a T1 res. Suffixes can't be changed, reforged life, whatever, veiled chaos orb, however you want to craft it. And then craft uh, projectile gems right there. I am going for chance to suppress spell damage and intimidate on my implicits. Boots, I bought Fractured T1 Spell Suppression. I think it was like 50 chaos. Essence of Sorrow for Dexterity until I hit a res on the suffix. And then suffixes can't be changed. Wild Bristle Matron, Veiled Chaos Orb, and try to unveil that Onslaught. For the implicits, we want action speed and cooldown recovery rate of travel skills. For me, that's really the best. Also, I did not go for ailment immunity in this build. I did not find it was necessary. I could do wave 30 simulacrum, deathless, all 30 waves without ailment immunity. There is no reason to absolutely go for it. You know, if you want to, you can do a storm shroud setup. You can do uh, an ancestral visions. You can do a fire song. I did not go for that. I don't care. <laughs> I leech and have life gain on hit at a thousand life per second. I do have freeze immunity here. I'm using soul of the brine king for freeze immunity and reduced effective chill as well as Soul of Abrath because I'm running Red Altars. If you want to, Ancestral Visions, again, you can use Storm Shout, Ancestral Visions, craft this a little bit differently if you care. I did not personally care. I'm not dying to ignite. Yeah, sometimes a big shock is annoying. I don't really care. You can do that if you want to. And then last up for the items, we have the body armors right here. Base recommendation is the Queen of the Forest. Running fast is fun. I was wearing this until two days ago. This was my go-to body armor. 
just being able to run really, really fast all the time. We don't need more damage. Even with the Queen of the Forest, I'm still at 70 million DPS. That's totally fine. You don't need more damage than that for basically anything in the game. But this Grasping Mail makes me significantly tankier. Tons and tons of damage. This is really just for like high-end showing off type of stuff. This is not necessary whatsoever. Queen of the Forest, you can just buy them for 10, 20 chaos, double corrupt them, try to get something decent. Socket of Projectile Gems, not really the best actually. Bow skills don't get much at all out of additional gem levels. Ideal here would actually just be 50% increased damage and probably plus one to all max res. But yeah, this is just my mapping body armor. This is what I wear when I'm running around, just kind of mapping really, really quickly. And then if I'm gonna do harder content, this is, uh, this is the baby's pajamas. We crafted this yesterday. It cost a grand total of 120 divines to craft, but that's because I made a perfect body armor. I definitely could have settled for something very solid and good <laughs> for a total price of like 70 divines but I went for perfect, perfect here. So, you know, that's why it costs more. We actually only need eye level 82 for this craft, but I went for 86 because that's just what was available. I bought the base for 57 divines. The price will vary greatly. I've seen it between 45 and 75 for just the fractured base. I saw it at 57 the other day, so I bought it. How I crafted this was essences of life, greed, until I hit the T1 evasion rating with the max life. Prefixes can't be changed, Veiled Chaos Orb, until you get a prefix, unveil the increased life and mana. And then we have this picture here. This is what I did Friday on stream, is you want to make the Eater of Worlds dominant. You want to use a higher tier Eater of Worlds Eldritch Currency right here. So you can use one grand, and then you can use a lesser for the Searing Exarch to make sure that this one's dominant, which means that Eldritch Currency will only affect suffixes. And then I did that over and over again. It's like, this was the base. Like, this was really easy to hit, actually. I think I hit the prefixes in, like, less than five divines, but then it cost me many, many divines to hit T1 dexterity. So you're going to craft strength of intelligence on the suffix, you're going to block, and then you're going to use an Eldritch Exalt, try to hit T1 dex. If you don't get that, remove crafted mod, Eldritch Annul to remove whatever mod you added, recraft strength and intelligence, then Eldritch Exalt again, and do that over and over and over again, and over again, <laughs> until you hit T1 Dexterity. Then you spam Divine Orbs until it's as perfect as you can get it, craft increased attributes, and you're good to go. For the Implicits, we want less damage taken per Dexterity. You do not need to go for perfect. Chat bullied me into going for perfect. It's not only overkill, it doesn't do anything. And we can see this because I have 2331 Dex, 2331 divided by 180, I'm slightly off. If I do 180, oh, I have to hit 2340 dexterity. Oh no. If I get nine, yep, look at this. If I get nine more dexterity, I actually get 1% less damage taken. So I'm very close to that. And, you know, that's, I guess that's a, a stretch goal for this build is perfectly divine everything and find just a little bit more dex. Uh, I'll probably do that after this video. I'll probably do that after this video. That's the fun, right? Of deck stacking or any stacking build is like, I can get 1% less damage taken. I'm very strongly encouraged to do that min-maxing, and that's kind of the fun of a build like this. So yeah, all right, I got to find more nine more decks. Great. <laughs> and yeah, so that's all of the gear. And then in terms of the jewels and the passive tree, what we're doing here is you'll notice this orange line. We're stretching all the way down here, and this gives us two split personalities. Split personalities are delirium jewels that get stronger the further they are from where you start on the tree. So that's actually why I have this kind of awkward pathing path that goes around like this because the longer this path is, the more dex and strength that I get from these jewels. In terms of the small jewels, you want res, you want crit multi, you want life, attack speed, stuff like that. That's just kind of like the general go-to. Penetrate on the implicit if it's corrupted is really, really good. Chaos res is hard to get in this build. You'll see that I only have 6%. It is just really hard to get. But since I'm using Progenesis, I have 41% all the time. It's acceptable. I'm using this Brutal Restraint right here, which gives me 5% dex, 5% dex, 5% dex, and plus 20 flat dex. Really, really good. This is the best Brutal Restraint for this build, 7737. Last I saw, none existed on the market. So, you know, that can be hard to get. If you're putting together the dex stacking build, again, strongly encourage you to watch this video. I talk about how you can search for your own Brutal Restraint, but this is the perfect one if you want to go for it. And then in terms of the large cluster jewels, we want to go for Dexterity, All Attributes, Increased Effect, and Arcing Shot. Because our projectiles, we have Far Shot, we want the projectiles to go as long as possible. You know, Arcing Shot's really good. We get Crit Chance and 50% increased damage. You know, And since we have Vengeance Cascade, the arrows are going really, really far. 
that's, uh, you know, we're basically always getting the max effective arcing shot. And it does stack, so we have two arcing shots right here for 200% critical strike chance and 100% increased damage. I'm currently at 89% spell suppression, but lucky, so that does end up being calculated at 99% spell suppression. I am okay with not, you know, having exactly perfect spell suppression. 99% lucky, I think, is okay. This large thread of hope is absolutely cracked. We get King of the Hill, Master Fletcher, Primeval Force, One with Nature, Quick Step, Aspect of the Eagle, and Multi Shot. This is the way for this build. For the Ascendancy, while I'm mapping, I like to use Ricochet with Endless Munitions through Far Shot and Gathering Winds, of course. But if I want to just fight Ubers, if I'm doing hard content like Simulacrums, then I do switch to Focal Point. Less damage taken from enemies near the marked enemy is obviously incredible. And then 75% increased effect of your marks. You can see what this does to my damage. This is actually with it allocated right now. So with Ricochet, I'm at 108 million DPS. And with Focal Point, I'm at 121.6 million DPS. So I leave Ricochet on 99% of the time. But if I'm trying to do something really, really hard, uh, you know, doing Ubers or something, Focal Point is, is a really good swap there. Then in terms of Flasks, I'm using Dying Sun, Progenesis, Orias End. Orias End is absolute overkill for clearing, but for high density maps, it is noticeable. And then a very strong Diamond Flask and a very strong... Movement Speed Quicksilver Flask. If you want to get tankier, Taste of Hate, you can replace either Dying Sun or Orias End. 15% Fizz taken as Cold is incredible, especially since we have less damage taken in our Cold Res. This is actually even stronger. And then obviously, if you're bossing or something, put in a Life Flask over like Dying Sun. Because we have so much Dexterity, that's giving us more evasion here. I actually have 80% evasion like this, which is pretty cool. And that's with the body armor that gives me almost no evasion. If I put on the Queen of the Forest, which is my regular mapping setup, because I just want to go fast, right? I actually have 85% evasion with no Jade Flask or nothing. If you toss on a Jade Flask, it does go to 88%. So, you know, pretty incredible if you want to do that. I find it absolutely unnecessary. We're killing everything way off of the screen right here, right? So many arrows. So many arrows. <laughs> everything dies. Like, unless I stand in a dot or something, I basically never die. And then, yeah, like I said, for single target, I swap in Barrage for really big single target. And then I use Mirage Archer for regular clear. All right. And in the initial recording, I realized that I actually forgot to... I started mapping, actually. Uh, I forgot that I missed talking about the mana cost with Mana Forge. And that is actually super, super critical with this build. Let's just put this away real quick. So the way that Mana Forged Arrows works is... It has a 200% cost and reservation multiplier. And once you have spent with a bow skill at least 300% of the mana cost of the skill that you're trying to trigger, then it will trigger that skill with a cooldown of 0.5 seconds on the baseline. So you can see that I have it set up. So my ice shot costs one mana and all of my other skills, I actually have them costing zero mana. I am able to do that by using the life master here for skills cost life instead of 30% of the mana cost. So if a baseline skill costs 12 mana, it will go to eight mana and three life. And what that does is it makes it very, very easy to solve most of your mana cost issues. And to the point where I actually think this is like, this is going to be the new Replica Conqueror's efficiency for everybody these days, as long as you have some sort of life sustain and you're not CI. With that plus non-channeling minus seven on all three of my main jewelry slots right here, as well as using inspiration in both of these links, I am able to get the mana cost to all of my triggered skills to zero. Now, your primary skill has to cost at least one mana, so you know, always look at your eye shot, make sure that costs one mana, and then as long as your other ones will cost zero mana, it will always trigger one available. Now, if they do end up costing one mana, right, that means I have to make my eye shot cost three mana, and that's really annoying to do. It's not that the mana cost is an issue, like my mana doesn't even move. The problem is that when you have non-channeling skills, like any global minus mana cost, that makes all of them go down. So very specifically, actually, I'm using anomalous inspiration support here and divergent inspiration here so that these ones get more of a mana cost reduction, whereas anomalous here doesn't get that as part of the quality. So yeah, that is how you deal with mana. Always be very careful with that. Like it's very easy to mess up. In fact, I'll, I'll show you really easily here. And then you'll notice here that my lightning arrow costs two mana, but burning arrow costs four mana. And then my ice shot is costing six mana. So I am able to trigger the lightning arrow consistently, right? This costs six, lightning arrow costs two because there are mismatched mana costs where burning arrow costs 13 mana base right here and lightning arrow costs 11. That will then get you into a weird situation where, you know, if I set my lightning arrow right here, you can see that they're not triggering 
at the same like always rate, right? And then if your mana cost is too high, right? If you're not spending mana and you're just attacking, then you're not going to trigger anything. So that's the thing that you really have to be conscious of is look at your mana cost, make sure that they line up properly. If you're doing body armor swaps or anything, make sure your mana costs aren't being altered. If you change any support gem, right? Like your mana costs are set by that cost and reservation multiplier. And so if you gem swap and you're like, oh, this support gem is 130 and this gem is 150, right? Like my ice shot is one mana here and now it goes to three mana. And, you know, depending on what gems you're swapping or anything, that can make a big difference and break your mana forge setup. That is just another thing to balance in this build with the dexterity and all that type of stuff. So anyway, back to the original recording. All right, that was a lot of talking. I just wanted to share with you guys, you know, basically this is my build of the league, honestly. The crucible mechanic is not that much fun to interact with. I'm That's what's stopping me really from playing more builds this league. Uh, and just how much I'm loving and enjoying this build, like so many arrows, right? <laughs> how much I'm loving and enjoying playing this build. It does everything I needed to do. I'm actually currently very slowly working on seeing how deep I can get in Delve. And yeah, I mean, if I can take this to like 600 Delve, that'd be pretty cool. It's a great feeling build. And if you want to play a bow build that absolutely will eat your currency, but it will reward you for that. And it's very satisfying and interesting and a fun puzzle to solve. You know, consider playing this over the regular Omni Lightning Arrow or whatever tornado shot that everyone else is playing. If you want to play something a little bit hipster, a little bit different, and is uh, you know very rewarding as well for the effort and uh, and time and money that you put into it. But yeah, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. -bye.